sitting there going, look, I don't know, man. Minnesota against the Red. I will vote it. You know what? I'm going with you. Yeah. 200 is dumb. She gets yeah, I have a little cousin. Basically, compound interest. <laughs> Be of the family. Because she gets. Yeah, I have a little cousin. He's Mersh four. is somehow like a less responsible Uncle Buck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's a cousin. Yeah. And like, literally, every time he comes over, sometimes he thinks of random ideas. Literally, he was hiding under my grandma's bed. Is he trying? Was he watching her have sex? Oh, God, Bill. Not again. So he's hiding Sweet. under the bed. Yes. Yeah, that's not that interesting. Dude. Bro. <laughs> They're gonna eat him up for this. Oh, look on her little face. Oh. <laughs> Yo, okay. On its face, it's harmless. What did he say? That's not that interesting. Ugh. It just moves on to a little. <laughs> This is an eight-year-old Bill. This isn't someone on your <laughs> on your HBO show. This is some wild shit, bro. Like I never understood, but like at the same time, it does make sense because there are those people that are like that. That um, They're not playing a character. That's just that's just who they are, you know. There's no off button. What a fucking he's insane. This what is, a fucking dick, bro. Is, what is, is wrong with you, you fucking animal? I knew you guys would love this. He's so unbelievable. Look, guys. Every once in a while, I'll drop something in the flurry, and it's like. Literally, I this was one of those where I was like Salt Bay when I dropped it, what and I was like, Oh, yeah, fuck? you guys are gonna love this. Is this who, who talks to kids? Like, Why, <laughs> dude, I, mean, I, 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 I think Bill Maher might be one of the few people who just is no one he knows has kids. There's no. like no, he, that's what no I'm that's what I was saying earlier. He's had no zero minimal interaction with children. How so maybe he was an only child who was only around and, and maybe his parents were older like his, his you know what I mean um, and and then he never he, he was homeschooled and the first time he met people was at college and I, I don't know I, I, I don't know like and then he got good at socializing with, with adults Right, and he just never had to be around kids before. I mean, I guess it's possible. Or he's been around kids like way too much, and he's super comfortable with how he can subtly bring up topics you shouldn't speak about <laughs> with the children that aren't yours, you know, for the sake of. I don't know what he's got going on. How about do you play video games? That's but that's what I was saying I earlier. Mean, like I you mean, and I could. Uh, you want to play? This guy's like getting yeah, out of the bed. Super cool. Get out! It tells a boring story. You're supposed to go. Ha ha! Normal shit. This guy's like, yeah, I don't know. It's boring. You know when a kid tells a boring story, you're supposed to go. Ha ha! Man, nice. He's hiding yeah, under the bed. Super cool. Get out of town. That's nuts. He's a nut. He's a madman. That guy. Speaking of video games, if you play Wolfenstein, <laughs> see what it's about. You play as the bad guy. Uh huh. You're the bad guy in this one. It's really weird. Under the bed while I was watching TV, up on top of the bed. Yeah. So what do you do for danger? What do you do for a living? For danger. What do you do for a living? I'm eight. What is he? The guy who hunts for prostitutes in LA streets at night is. Uh -huh. like, what do you do for danger? I'm I'm what eight. You, how do you feel what alive? <laughs> what do you do for danger? Well, sometimes I go on pedophiles podcasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I? Damn. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. What? What are you asking? A, what do you mean for danger? She's eight years old. Why have you focused on her? Uh, maybe. The
I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you focused on the little girl and her brother sitting right next to her? But you ain't got no questions for the the teenager. I thought you were used to talking to college kids and shit. Um, even if they're just escorts or whatever. Um. I don't know. Who knows with these with these individuals? They change their names. Like, how do you? Anyway. What do I do for danger? I'm an eight year old white girl. I just listen to people on Reddit. Yeah, that's very dangerous. <laughs> that's it. That'll create enough danger. For danger? Yeah. For kicks. For kicks? Like what? Like what? Oh my God. She's eight. So the word he was looking for was fun, and he categorized it to an eight-year-old as danger or kicks, as if an eight-year-old is going to know the 1950s expression, what you do for kicks. That's not even what kicks means anymore. Kicks would just mean, what, a pair of sneakers? Like, I don't even know. It... it to me, it's when I'm making a beat, we have kicks. You know what I'm saying? I don't even... He doesn't know how to communicate with people. If you can't make sense of it with a child, then, like, you probably don't have a good sense of anything. But who knows? I don't, I don't know what to make of Bill Maher half the time, because... He seems smart about certain things, and then other things he seems retarded. So it's like, well, what are you going to do? And it's like, well, I'm just going to call him out when I feel like he was stupid about a particular thing. And, um, you know, I'm open to being proven wrong, but sometimes it's like, yeah, bro, I don't even feel like voicing it to you because if you'd even say that, you're way off track. Like, I don't even know where to start to try to tell you something. Front and baby. All right. Eight, Bill. You're fucking retarded, Bill. I don't know. You tell me. I mean, you're, the, you're the kid. I'm asking questions. That's what I want to know. Like, what do you... Like, Who when thought I was this was a good idea, Bill Maher? Bill. <laughs> it is produced by a minute. Um, I don't know what he was thinking about on this one, yo. He had to know this was this is a, most certainly a bad look, right? I mean, you would think. <laughs> the Bill Maher thought this was a good idea. Bill Maher thought this, yeah. See, because keep in mind, this isn't his HBO show where a producer was yeah. sunk in a high to interview kids. Guidance kids. Jury. What am I their parent? What am I, a teacher? Oh, uh, fuck. What am I, their Jury. parent? What am I, their parents? Parent? <laughs> oh, fuck. What am I, a YouTuber? <laughs> what I did for kicks was. What's that? Phone? The phone? Yeah, she I'm sure. Explain. She was talking about Roblox. Um, right. Yeah, I was gonna ask you if you should download it. No, Bill Maher's like, oh, I know all about Roblox. I'm a phone. Um, I got <laughs> one when I was three. Three? You yeah. were too young to have a camera phone. Well, then maybe she's too young to be on your show. That's that was, that was maybe she's too young to hear sex jokes, Bill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had to murder the man <laughs> like that. Hey. Oh, is she is she too young to have a camera phone bill? Well, maybe she's too young to be on your show. <laughs> yes. Yes, she is. Unfortunately. What the fuck, Bill? What were you thinking? <laughs> maybe she's too young for the sex jokes, Bill. Jeez. I'm about to have to make myself something. I'm gonna try to get through this though. No, my reaction in my head because I couldn't say that out loud. Three? That's <laughs> just so wrong. <laughs> I mean, three. And what do you do on your phone? I play Roblox, Minecraft, and I have it on my own YouTube channel. And I also.
This kid's already doomed. He's gonna subscribe. So, have an Instagram account and a TikTok account at this age. She's got a and YouTube show. You think Kumi is pissed he sold Compound now? Yeah. Blood says, yeah, okay. I would never watch it. Like, I wouldn't watch any detective oh. work on CBS. Well, I but, I mean, uh, that's for people even older than me. Can you believe that? Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> Just because you don't have kids doesn't mean you have to adopt. Yeah, you, you know, know, you don't have, have to, to adopt. You don't have to be around them at all, right? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> some people shouldn't be around them, Bill. Yeah, like you. <laughs> They're not letting up on him. <laughs> he at least tried there, you know. But now it's like, no, now you, now you already look weird now. <laughs> now everything is tainted with that. I heard that you, you didn't like kids or something. I, I, that is a, a rumor <laughs> started by a child I knocked into the gutter with the door of my limousine. It is. It's being funny. It's being funny. Not true at all. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I, I, I mean, some of us don't want to have kids around all the time, but do I hear with you look like someone who doesn't like kids? Of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Bill. You clearly do. Bill, I don't know you how told, you... You called an eight-year-old boring to her face. I don't know how you're thinking... I don't I'm not she... even capable of that. Like, I don't I don't know how you think you're coming across. <laughs> do I? I'm perfectly comfortable with you little shits here. He and I are awful. And he and I no. couldn't just tell an eight-year-old to their face. No, They're man. boring. He goes, do I look like someone who doesn't like kids? And she goes, physically or... Yeah. No, you look like a guy who maybe likes kids too much is yeah. the problem. Right <laughs> you either, he looks like someone who either really hates kids or really likes kids. Of course not. I like old people. Mm -hmm. I like... <laughs> I like all people in limited time amounts. Um, so. Yeah, usually it's a 30 minute block on HBO. No, man. No, man. We ain't gonna go through all of this, I'll tell you right now. All right. Let me see if I can do this real quick. A little sham sham. What the hell did I search over? <laughs> What's with the picture? <laughs> oh god. What was I searching? Where is it? Oh, it's up here. Man, what the f Oh, uh, okay, I see what I was trying to for a sound bite. Debacle when I come back. Um, yeah, I feel like that's fair.
do want to look into some shit, though. I want to look into some, uh... Some of the Mongol Empire stuff again. Look into some of that Mongol Empire stuff again so I can, like, get a better grip on it. Birdman. Hey. Yeah, so... I had some... I had a couple of uh, critiques, per se, uh, as I was listening at work, so I could have been wrong, misheard. That seems a little weird, doesn't it? Right off the bat. Polly want a cracker. What are you trying to say? right now so you're trying to imply that he's a puppet a parrot uh okay so this is already a personal slander type of deal I didn't even get a second into the motherfucker that's probably not the way to start if you want to be taken like as a serious or unbiased you know individual and that I think I immediately clued into that I was like hmm cause I like both of these guys and um I did watch maybe we should watch the aristocratic uh, utensils uh video first And then we, or maybe we can go along with it. Watch his first, and then this one. I don't know what I want to do. It, but I didn't stream it so like I figured cause I haven't watched all of Birdman's video yet so I figured I'd go ahead and do that <sighs> Planet Fitness trying to take over right now huh. and yeah like this person actually put some effort into <laughs> the production value of the show. Um, not that Birdman doesn't put in any effort, but uh, I think it's been kind of stagnant, the level of that. But I'd have to actually go back and watch every video to make sure that that was the case. But that's just the impression I got why I stopped going back to his channel in the first place. Um, for any kind of serious review of a film or analysis of it um, because he just didn't come across as you know objective about what we were seeing so that's why I stepped away from the Birdman so we'll just have to see how that goes um but in the me we lay. And damn, 50 minutes and 50 minutes. I mean, I don't think the utensil would care if I just play his video in one go. Right? And then. I don't know. I still feel like. 
Yeah, no, we should just let utensils video play in one go, and then when we watch Birdman's video, when he brings up a point, we can we can go back to it if he makes a point. Um, you know, I was watching it for a bit, like, and it got up to like 19 minutes, and I don't think I've heard an argument yet. Um, I won't skip that. I'll show that to you that that's the case, um, because I'm not. I'm not afraid to back up my opinion that he doesn't bring a, a an argument of value or of merit or in truth like a real argument at all. It just seemed like a whining for like 19 minutes. So, um, but I could have been wrong. Again, I was listening while I was working and doing other things, so I may have, you know, heard some things out of context potentially. Uh, and I think I watched Aristocratic Utensils video like two days ago or maybe three days ago and then Birdman's video two days ago is when I started it, I think it could have been yesterday I really don't remember to be honest um, yeah, that was yesterday when I seen Birdman's response and I started getting <laughs> right, did I work yesterday? What the fuck is it today? Yes, October first. Made a burst. I'm about to go get some ramen noodles, bitch. Cause I'm first in the kitchen. Yeah, I'm getting lynched in. <laughs> I'm just laughing, smiling, and y'all grimacing. <laughs> <laughs>
bacon. We about to cook some bacon. Yeah, nigga, that's what we're making. Bake the fuck up, nigga. Make it, make it, make it. Bring it home at dollars and they quake it. Y'all niggas, saying naked. Uh, uh, I'm making that bacon. Just let y'all know, nigga. I'm making bacon. If they asking, that's what I'm making. They just faking. That's the turkey bacon. I said, nah. That's gross, nigga.
slimy guild. Yeah, yeah, they know what time of deal. Baby girl, she want the deal. And that's just perfect, because I just want the pill. The pill. <laughs> Purple. 
Life living, everything is looking lovely. Shit, as far as I see it, Rain Man, dog, we set the blow. So incredible, swagged out, clever flow. Young Zip Teasy, and I'm fresher than a vegetable. Damn, that bitch bad thing, I might have to let her know. Count every blessing, cause some niggas will never blow. Something like professional, smoking on that medical. Thank you. 
Just think of one more Mickey leaning when you see slow Lone wolf attitude, but don't sleep on my tongue, no Nigga, I got my foes, but I don't seem to need them, no At USF, I'm just benching 300 I squat about 60, go and burn two O's Live on through the music, nigga it's never over. Every brother on the cloud is a ruthless soldier. Shining in the sky like five supernovas. Bring the formulas. I'll let you keep the leftovers. Mainstream things dwindling. Maybe I'm left over. Point that thing and I can separate chest and shoulder. A thermometer will show ya. I couldn't be no colder. Even if I was living somewhere polar. Man, let's just burn some eyes at Doja. I shouldn't have to splash it out. I ain't Rob Lotion. And if you get that, you watch too much Family Guy Too fast and too furious, that's what made Brian die Too much TV, that'll make your brain fry And I should not explain why Just get in the gym, nigga, and try To flex like these niggas on the cloud Just tell me you so lost. I looked out just like Red Cross and hooked you up for the low cost. I helped you out when times were rough when I ain't even have enough. All that just to show you love because I want to see you up. But all you did was let me down when you were supposed to hold me down. You were plugged in with a G, but now you run in with the clowns. I heard that they got no sauce. But Cloud9, nah, man, that's mo sauce. It's showtime, so I show off. I get on the beat and go off. You slip my grip, that's your loss. 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 I hustle all day like Rick Ross. These bitches backwards like Chris Cross. Cloud9, nah, man, that's lift off. These bitches out here sick. No brain, so they slip and grip and really ain't about shit. You had your chance, but you blew it, and now you can't forget. Cause you with a lame, and he ain't this, but that is what you pick. He a no name, and he clueless, but you all on his dick. No sweat, it's too many others that recognize legit. That's Cloud9 in the movement, so we just take our pick. She dancing, and she moving, and, and she super thick. With a slim waist when she do it And a mind right above other things She ain't impressed by the bling But she don't mind if a nigga shine And he go and let that chain swing You slip my grip, that's your loss That just tell me you so soft You think you won but so off I just had to take a load off You slip my grip, that's your loss 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 I hustle all day like Rick Ross These bitches backwards like Chris Cross Cloud nine man, that's lift on.
And I be with G-O-D, cleaner than detergent be. And I get my cash flow colder than McFlurry's be. Just give me my currency. Flexing so hard that a nigga bout to bust a vein. Only real niggas in my circle. I can't trust a lane. Bitches in my pocket, cause I'm real with my muscle game. Bitches that don't know me looking at me like, what's your name? Bitch, it knew the but to me, it ain't one of the strange bitches. Know the difference, cause they know that we are not the same Soon as one left, you can bet that another came Keep it 100, motherfucker, I could never change Put 
scripts and empty shit. I'll fool you, but don't get too close. Me. I'll fool you. Catch me riding supercharged, thick, big, booty, broad, big body, cold, old, riding in them super cars, jet black, super hard, only spitting super bars, doing big things, motherfucker, cause the super cars, super cars, super cars. Yeah, I'm a D boy, so you know I love Chevys. Just ask my dog C26 is beating heavy. Me, I'm getting plenty paid. Me, I let the city spray. Representing FLA, right now, it's definitely. Chevy's in the drop, 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 in the drop. Recognize me, the truth, and we beat down your block, and we swinging down the corner with the Chevy's in the drop. Chevy's, 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 Chevy's,
the more it feels right. And then you do crazy stuff, like wait in the bushes with a rifle for 10 hours to take a shot at a former president. Further studies showed that the illusory truth effect could even make people have false memories, and that people with names that were easier to pronounce were more readily believed by participants of the study. This is a powerful psychological tool that grifters employ on their audience, and its effects are seen every single day. How many times have you heard vaccines cause autism, or go woke, go broke? There is a reason these people repeat these mantras over and over, even in the face of conflicting evidence, and that's because repeating false information... All right, let's pause here for a moment. Now, what do you notice about the thumbnails and the content creators? Conflicting evidence, you say? Yeah, it's not like tanking box office numbers or headlines like these might be telling you all is not right at Disney or something now, is it? Makes it more likely to be believed. Here's a network graph of the phrase, go woke, go broke, on Twitter from August 2022 to February 2023. The blue represents left-leaning users, while the red represents right-leaning users. The irony of the shape formed by right-wingers isn't lost on me. A literal dickhead. This brings me to the subject of this video. Will Jordan, a.k.a. The Critical Drinker. Tell me, how many times have you heard him say, The Message? What's up, everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood Birdman here. Today, I'm going to question why people believe this grifter and show you precisely why you shouldn't. Due to the kinds of people this video is sure to attract, I think I need to put my cards on the table. Firstly, I am not a political type. I rarely, if ever, bring up politics, and when I do, it's usually to make fun of them, left or right. It's been not even three minutes into this video. You opened with a sentence featuring the phrase a fucking Nazi, spoke about believing false narratives, and then featured a collage of culturally right-leaning content creators, pointing out that leftist pandering pieces don't sell, and then topped it off by insinuating right-wingers are dickheads. Cut the crap, Junior. If you project left any harder, someone's gonna ask you your preferred fucking pronouns. For this behavior, I have been routinely called right-wing and left-wing by people who make politics their entire identity. Yeah, because pulling up an old tweet featuring random people on your comment section without context months ago is really gonna sell me on your pitiful attempt to appear above the fray. You've done a great job of it so far. How about I pull up that tweet, seeing as I do my homework? Let's look at one of them, shall we? Read this tweet for yourself. Pause the video. I follow evidence, not political leaders. You follow people trying to get money out of you. My good God, talk about arrogant delusion. Now, this is peak blue pill midwit stuff right here. Everything about this man so far screams pseudo-intellectual huffing of own farts. When you're siding with people standing in the middle of traffic holding banners and gluing their I was cool with your channel until you smashed Republicans. You had sex with Republicans? Oh no, climate change. So it must mean what it typically means to, I don't know, to talk shit about, I guess. Fuck you and your liberal bullshit point political views. Uh, you were cool with the channel until when I was smashing Democrats. But when I did the same thing to your preferred flavor of politics, it's now a problem. Haha, uh -huh. I love hypocrisy. That's why I made the series. Because you're a hypocrite? <laughs> Climate change is not a political point, stupid. It's a scientific one. Well, not really. A pseudo-scientific one. For sure. More like a propaganda one. I follow evidence, not political leaders. No, no, you follow what the political leaders tell you to believe, obviously, or you wouldn't believe in climate change being a serious threat to humanity in the next 20 years, like they always say. You follow people trying to get money out of you. We are not the same, okay? Uh, <clears throat> also, I'd love to see you do something about me. Please fuck around and find out exactly how liberal these hands are. So you threaten a person that didn't threaten you in any way, shape, or form. Which says a lot about you. It, it really does. It says that you probably can't defend yourself at all. 
in the real situation, you know that you're going to probably not have what it takes. Their hands to the tarmac, implying those people are driven by science. Yeah, you should really evaluate your life at that point. Also, I would love to see you do something about me. Please fuck around and find out exactly how liberal these hands are. Oh, yeah, and of course, wanting to fight with random strangers on the Internet. Way to defy the stereotype. Again, this is one man's attempt to sell you all the idea that he is somehow the enlightened centrist immune to bias. Newsflash here, Junior. This is an away game for you, and this is my home turf. We're three minutes into this video. We haven't even heard anything about Drinker's opinions. This is a pitch to establish some form of credibility. Frankly, that says more about his perception of the intelligence of those around him, or rather lack thereof. Then again, he's an actor living in Los Angeles. Need I say more? My position is that political folk are mirror images of each other. Angeles, need I say more? My position is that political folk are mirror images of each other participating in the Spider-Man meme, where they blame each other for doing exactly what they themselves are doing. Okay, I already disliked him before, but this just cranked it up a gear for me. And it shows he is far too intellectually shallow to engage in politics, and frankly there's many, many people who have this exact same problem. It's basically a version of the genetic fallacy, what I call the action-by-faction perspective. These are people who cannot separate the action from the political alignment. And from what I can tell, most people can't do this. They have this particular worldview where the structures and rules are permanently set in stone and they can never change. They really struggle when you pitch them any abstract concepts. Any faction can and does use force to enforce a worldview. This is any civilization. What matters is the justification for that use of force, a concept that most people can't seem to understand. Probably because liberalism has severely retarded the scope of their worldview. Something the drinker is heavily guilty of. I think it's silly to adhere to political sides because at some point in time, you're going to have to defend nonsense to maintain the integrity of being on that side. Oh, the irony, seeing as he does that in this very video and comes across as completely insane for doing so. The only side I'm on is reason.
Newton, logic, facts, science, and math. Spoken like a man who knows nothing of power. You're a leftist. By default, your worldview revolves around actively ignoring all of those things. In fact, you yourself will show that to be the case throughout this entire video. So believe me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to. When I criticize this very obviously right-wing chud, I'm doing so out of the spirit and integrity of unbiased media discourse, which is something I care about deeply. Right-wing chud. Believe me, by the end of this video, there will be no doubt in anyone's head you are nothing of what you claim to be. You're extremely biased, and the concept of integrity is completely foreign to your person. That's the introduction. Anyone who is remotely clued into the political landscape might guess you're kinda left. Someone like myself, who runs on pattern recognition, something I strongly suspect he's not terribly familiar with, a suspicion that grew stronger the longer the video went on, might have stronger opinions. In fact, I'll skip ahead and give you my summary of this man, just based on this video. He is a deeply closeted, raging leftist, has a clear prejudice against Europeans, especially ones he thinks are right-wing, couldn't be more envious of Drinker's success if it was tattooed on his damn forehead, and much like every other leftist, has his head so far up his own ass, high on his own smug sense of moral superiority, thoroughly convinced of his own intelligence because he follows and obeys the authoritative sources like the good little pleb that he is, and wouldn't be able to concoct an original thought of his own if his life depended on it, all cloaked in a tone dripping with passive-aggressive pretentiousness. In so many ways, he is a thoroughly unimpressive dime-a-dozen walking cliché. I think you'll find my assessment rather satisfactory. Less important, but still worth the mention. I'm not doing this out of jealousy or an attempt to clout chase. The word you're looking for is envy. And yes, you are. You're just bad at it. I've been calling out a much bigger YouTuber for nearly seven years. The fact you have to mention the size tells us you're in it for the clout. For me, this is simply calling out another bad critic. That out of the way, it's difficult to know where to even start with this guy. He is absolutely rich with misinformation, outright lies, and baffling takes that don't stand up to even an ounce of scrutiny. That is a case of projection so strong you could power the Las Vegas Strip with it. But let's see how you stand up to my scrutiny. And yes, I did skip the first bit here. It involves a film I haven't seen yet, so I can't speak on the perspective. I'm only going with what I can use here. The moment I loved our Subaru Outback most... Oh, thank goodness. ...was the moment they walked away from it. Subaru, more IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus awards than any other brand. And that's why our family will only drive a... Will's goal with many of his film reviews is to galvanize his mostly male, mostly white, and mostly straight audience around... Northern Ireland, 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 Northern Inside house cat, we're gonna rehome it. You need to save her. We can't, Jordan. <laughs> we cannot bring him another freaking animal. <sighs> Too many misfits. Oh, God, I over. around the idea that they are being attacked for being those three things. As anybody else noticed so far, we have heard nothing but left-wing talking points. Meanwhile, in the real world... In America, there's a thing about both white vigilantism and white tears, particularly male white tears. Biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. This is Jim Crow, this is Jane Crow. The real religion, the real politics in America is whiteness and whiteness unhinged. When we allude to people as an invasion, as an infestation, we are directly, we are directly pulling from the language of white supremacy. Yeah, I'm sure there's nothing to see here at all. It's not like Hollywood ever gets involved with political affairs, right? Brian Cranston! Chris Rock is in the house! Ben Stiller, Jennifer Lopez, Tracy Ellis Ross. Oh yeah, but you only follow facts and reason and logic. You disingenuous snake, get fucked. You do this often enough, and the audience will begin to believe it. This is not gonna end well for you, Junior. Hence, that atrocious reading of Across the Spider-Verse. 
But it gets even better. Here he is doing the same thing to the Batman. There used to be a bit of a debate going on about whether or not this movie is woke, mainly because of the demographics of certain characters. And to be fair, there is a bit of evidence to support this claim. If I was a cynical man, I'd say it's kind of interesting that the rich, corrupt scumbags targeted by the Riddler all happen to be straight, white, middle-aged men. But hey, I guess that's just a total coincidence. Seriously, what the fuck does this movie have to do with race? <laughs> In case you were wondering, yes, the entire video is full of moments like this. Moments that rely on the audience being full of complete morons who haven't paid a lick of attention to the entertainment ecosphere for the last 10 years. He has straight white men in his mouth so often, you'd think he was an escort. If he applied even a little of that gray matter, maybe he'd come to the conclusion that most rich people in our society tend to be white men. Ah, yes, because we're all terribly familiar with Hollywood's fastidious desire to represent the real world constantly. Do tell me something. If there's a scene involving someone committing a violent crime, would it be fair then to assume there's a more than 50% chance it should be someone black? I mean, if I'm being consistent with your own logic here. I notice he conveniently left out the aspect of villainy and focused purely on the demographic representation, as if demographic accuracy is in any way a concern for Hollywood. It's not like Hollywood has actors like Kumal Nanjiani who said it's very difficult to find bad guy roles because Hollywood, in an effort to appear diverse and inclusive, ends up only casting European men as the bad guys, which coincidentally robs non-European actors of the chance to expand their acting repertoire. Then again, considering the cast and couch is a thing, I have a hard time believing Hollywood actually cares about the integrity of its performers. Or their craft, for that matter. Man, this critique is so lazy. This is disingenuous, but this is veering off into inadequacy. The Riddler was going after police officers and politicians, and again, in our society, they tend to be white. What Drinker is asking for here is diversity, but only amongst the villains of the film. No, it's simply noticing a lack of people of color as the villains, because unlike you, he's not a blind moron trying to push a narrative. Moreover, what he's conveniently leaving out is Riddler also attempted to assassinate the mayor-elect. A black woman. Italian sausage, bacon, and pepperoni for only $8.99. That's the lowest price in three meat pizzas. Right, Professor Amon Ra? Meat plus meat plus meat equals... The three meat tree. Which is supposed to mean what exactly? If all of this wasn't baffling enough, he himself states this film isn't about race. And to be fair, Kravitz and Jeffrey Wright both do a great job with the roles they're given, and apart from one poorly judged line from Catwoman right at the end, race never really comes into the picture. So I guess what I'm saying here is that while the movie takes a few little stabs at modern day social issues, it really never dominates the narrative. Does he even hear himself? Do you? Because going off what I just heard, he went by the inclusion of people of color is woke. Considering the effort to tokenize everything that isn't a European man as political pawns, such an inkling simply stems from pattern recognition, I told you he isn't good at this, but then says that they perform competently at their roles. What are you even trying to imply here? If this is you trying to draft up a smear campaign, go back to the drawing board, Junior, you're still a cheap amateur. Listen to this incredible leap in logic for Godzilla vs. Kong. And oh look, Kong's been abducted from his homeland and taken across the ocean to America in chains. I mean, there's on-the-nose writing, and then there's next-level stuff like this. I wonder who you're supposed to sympathize with here. Yes, Drinker just called African slaves apes and tried flat, suggesting that the film would be clearly feminist in nature, as feminists have been arguing against heels for decades. Listen here, pal, if you're gonna pay that close attention to a trailer for feminist messaging, most people are gonna think you have a foot fetish. The marketing material also shows Barbie entering the real world and experiencing sexual assault, and I can only conclude that Drinker's media literacy is questionable at best. Yeah, because sexual harassment is quite the common theme for a movie centered around a children's play doll. To belabor this point, he's been caught changing the titles of his videos after a media property releases to hide his terrible perception of marketing material. And your evidence for this is what exactly? No, I think that's your delusional conclusion because you are trying to spin a narrative about the guy and you're failing miserably at it. And if all that wasn't enough to prove that Mr. Jordan has the integrity of a sandcastle? He says while proving he has no integrity himself. Here's something that was brought to my attention. On one of Drinker's live streams, he attributed a false quote to Isabella Merced about the failure of Madam Webb. Some of the stars of the film have got theories about why that is, and one of them is right here. Um, Isabella Merced? Is that the word? Mm -hmm. Merced? Sure. Yeah. She said it failed for one simple reason. 
For the same reason that the Marvels or Bird of Prey failed, because the male audience still hides a deep contempt for everything that is starring strong, yep. independent women. Oh, God. The truth is the truth, I guess. Sure. I mean, that's definitely the reason Birds of Prey <laughs> failed and the Marvels. It wasn't because they were bad films that no one wanted, for sure. Isabella was, of course, inundated with hate from parrots that took these quotes at face value because why would grifters lie to them? She then had to come out and deny these clearly false allegations, but by then, the damage was already done. To date, there has been no update, no retraction, no public apology on Twitter from Will Jordan for spreading this quote, and that's because he has a vested interest in seeing the culture war proliferate in media discourse, as this is profitable for him. I would like to know how on earth does this perspective make any bloody sense? You claim Dringa is outspoken against the mainstream Hollywood consensus. Who exactly is funding him, watching his content? It's not Hollywood bigwigs, it's regular people. So explain how on the one hand he's against the mainstream, pro its proliferation which apparently benefits him, whilst he also wants better quality of movies which would result in less rage which would in turn supposedly rob him of his cash cow. Make that make sense. Even if he didn't know the quote was fake, this shows the lack of research and effort he puts into his work. If I were you, I would keep quiet about denigrating somebody else's lack of effort and research they put into their work. No discernment, no ability to perform an investigation, and hastily attributes an obviously fake quote in a concerted effort to confirm his biases. Is it just me, or does it feel like he's putting way, way too heavy an emphasis on this particular event? I don't know, something about this just feels very... off. Here's what it's like to go to school for firearms, technology, and gunsmithing. Sonoran Desert Institute's online programs cover troubleshooting, firearm operations, shooting sports management, and more. With Why would you take anything he says seriously at this point? Considering everything he's done in this video, his constant need to call into question somebody else's integrity, all exudes this arrogant projection on a whole nother level. How can you trust he's done the homework? Oh my lord, make it stop. But let's play the panel's reaction again. Some of the stars of the film have got theories about why that is, and one of them is right here. Um, Isabella Merced, is that the word? Merced? Mm -hmm. Merced? Sure. Yeah. She said it failed for one simple reason. For the same reason that the Marvels or Bird of Prey failed, because the male audience still hides a deep contempt for everything that is starring strong, yep. independent women. Oh, God. The truth is the truth, I guess. Sure. I mean, that's definitely the reason Birds of Prey <laughs> failed and the Marvels... It wasn't because they were bad films that no one wanted. Okay, so, the post apparently came from the Comic Menu Facebook page, but notice their reaction to that quote. No one is surprised by that. Why? Interesting how he says, clearly false, obviously fake quote. And yet no one on the panel bothers to double check. Because clearly this is a life and death situation, and the career of someone whose name Drinker didn't even know is clearly going to get mauled by the salacious scandal. This has nothing to do with confirming a bias. It's because it sounds like something you would hear from every other ovarian drag wanked up by Hollywood. Hell, they even mention other films that tank for the same reason. It's not a bias, it's simply reverting to previous evidence. It's why no one bothered to double check it and why everyone was nodding their heads. And it's for the same reason memes like this are funny. Why She-Hulk failed and why Batwoman was a steaming pile of ass. The suit is literal perfection. It will be. When it fits a woman. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why these penis and female-led movies all tank. It's a total mystery. This is not the first time he's been caught manipulating a narrative. The YouTuber Pillar of Garbage exposed Drinker for lying about scenes in Glass Onion because Drinker has a political gripe with Ryan Johnson, the director of Glass Onion, and The Last Jedi, a film he and his ilk have pilloried for the past seven years because of perceived wokeness. <laughs> I am legitimately fascinated by the dome of delusion this git must reside in to say stuff like this out loud and still somehow magically claim to be objectively neutral. Ah, oh, these people are insane. Here's a clip. The example Drinky gives for Ryan Johnson's blatant rewriting is the scene where Blanc and, as we later see, Helen spot Duke's voyeurism. Batista's watching his girlfriend supposedly having an affair with Miles only to be observed by Blanc. Now look at the later version of this exact same scene. Notice how Helen's been added in here when she totally should have been visible before. Except, no, that isn't true. There's a reason the Drinker plays these clips on mute. Drinker does all of his reviews with the sound off. In fact, I'm just gonna skip this whole next point. It's 10 seconds of a review that lasts over 10 minutes. It's so overly pedantic it just makes you roll your eyes and say fuck off. Why would Drinker do that? Is he incompetent or is he a blatant liar? 
You know we can ask you the same question about your use of his trailer review and trying to pass it off as a full movie one. Did you do that because... because you're incompetent or because you're a pathetic hypocrite. There's like a sudden level of sociopathic with people like this, constantly projecting meanwhile they're guilty of sin of the same thing they accuse everyone else of doing. Whose idea was it to do that again? Ah, probably some people in stylish uniforms. Far as the rest of the clip is concerned, who cares? Your credibility is gone, and no one watching this video is going to take you seriously after this. You've lied before, and your envy fuel prejudice is now on full display. These are the only two choices you have, and both of them are damning for his reputation. And yet, he doesn't seem to care, because I guess his followers don't seem to care. I mean, he publicly demonstrates that he can't keep up with basic logic all the time. Considering your conduct in this video, I would tread lightly casting aspersions on somebody else's ability to wield logic, seeing as you have demonstrated a severe lack of capacity to apply it. Meanwhile, I can see that South African is tearing you to shreds. Look at this tweet from Star Wars Holocron. They are very obviously making the point that sometimes a show's first season isn't always where it finally ends up, with a couple examples, including The Clone Wars and Breaking Bad. Goldfish and chips. Together as one. When Will saw this, I mean, how do you fail at understanding the point this hard? This is one of two things. He either understands the point being made, but is attempting to misrepresent the point to, again, galvanize an already volatile audience against a contentious product, thereby sending his parrots to harass this account. Oh, do tell, why do you think it's contentious? Which actually fucking happened. Or he doesn't understand the purpose of an analogy. Okay, not to belabor the point too much here, but that's not an analogy. That's a simple comparison, as Drinker points out in the retweet. And his statement is straight up mocking them, because the comparison is a pile of arse. It's a bit of satire. Breaking Bad had a budget of, what, roughly three million per episode? And their first season had seven episodes, which amounts to roughly $21 million. And most importantly, could keep you hitting the play button. Whereas the Acolyte had a jaw-dropping $180 million to play with, or burn in this case. And the only thing that made you want to hit was the damn TV and everyone else involved with that abomination of a production. Hence why I got cancelled after only one season. Because it was ass and no one was watching it. You claim to follow math. Can you tell the difference here? Or did you lie about that as well? And do you think there will be any talk about why the Acolyte failed? Or will he continue to believe Drinker can summon subjects and command them to attack something like he's some kind of all-powerful monarch? I wish you could do that. Be pretty based, actually. Stupid people do this all the time. You'll say, well, fish swim and Olympic sprinters run, with the underlying logic being how they locomote, and the stupidest person you know will say, did you just compare a fish to an Olympian? And this is exactly why analogies are on IQ tests. Yeah, you see, in that analogy, those two things are different. What they have in common is the movement. Whereas here, you're comparing two of the same thing. What is the common thread of your analogy? I would suggest maybe lay off the IQ remarks. Intelligence is not your forte. But I'm willing to be charitable to Will. Ah, oh, you fuck. And suggest it's the former, that he knows the point that's being made, but is misrepresenting it to fit the narrative he's trying to push. I mean, the alternative is to suggest he's low IQ. And I would never do that. Oh, God, the left really can't meme, can they? How is this tweet pushing a narrative? This is one man mocking idiots high on copium. No more, no less. Get off the internet and touch grass, you sad bastard. Maybe shag a glory hole and get rid of that hate boner you have. His Twitter alone is an embarrassment of narrative pushes, from platform-boosting known anti-black racists like Kong Min Lee. Wait, is he? It's no wonder he follows me on Twitter. But secondly, look at this tweet. Every protagonist in the Assassin's Creed series has been aligned with the geography of the location. And then when an Asian takes issue with someone not from Asia being the protagonist in a game set in feudal Japan, this is your example of anti-blackness? Are you trying to one-up your own imbecility here? How fucking tone-deaf stupid are you? To even shit-talking PETA. Base, because they cringe. Because he perceives them to be left-wing, I guess? I don't know, that last one was just amusing to me. So I bring you back to this tweet. 
What do you honestly think he's saying here? That it contains political pandering, demographics and variables that don't sell. It evokes a visceral reaction in normal people that causes them to avert their attention away from all of this because it's an eyesore. An obvious observation that either an idiot doesn't see or an ideologue will willingly choose to ignore. I think it's silly to adhere to political sides because at some point in time, you're going to have to defend nonsense to maintain the integrity of being on that side. I do love using people's own words against them. So far, we've demonstrated he will lie or manipulate a narrative. No, we established quite early that narrative pushing is your gimmick. And if I took a shot every time you said the phrase narrative in this video, I would be suffering from liver failure. Trust me, I am drinking throughout making this video. Hell, I'm likely going to be drinking as I'm editing this bit right now. Use a member of a group that he regularly targets as a form of plausible deniability. No, he doesn't. And your argument for that was incredibly weak, by the way. That he clearly has issues with minority groups. Because they used as political pawns to push the message. But seriously, even if he did, who cares? Who the hell are you to tell anyone they have to like or coexist with people who don't look like them? I can dislike whoever I damn well please. We all seem to have forgotten this thing called the right to association. And that he perceives women being in these roles to be a political push. Yeah, because the tanking failure of female leads being toxically masculine and or uber feminist is really disputing that notion. Which of the humans in this image fits all that criteria? I love how unlike him, any sane person would look at all the factors objectively just listed and go, Yep, those are the reasons why this won't sell. Instead of being a loser online trying to call someone racist and shaming them for noticing reality. It's hilarious coming from someone who claims to follow rationality, logic, science and math, isn't it? All of that goes out the window to be replaced by this thing called emotion because he reasons like a woman. What this person does is not honest critique. <laughs> you have no power here. He looks for ways he can jimmy in alt-right political talking points under the guise of being a movie reviewer. No, that's what you are attempting to convince people he's doing because you are an unhinged leftist and therefore deeply envious of his popularity and deathly afraid to confront the reality that heterosexual European men will continue to be the top selling ticket for the movie industry. And I know his fan base doesn't want to believe that he is prejudiced against minority groups. No, I very much like him for that reason. And I will cheers to that. You, on the other hand, have yet failed to grasp why that prejudice exists. And your only go-to conclusion is racism, as you call everyone else around you low IQ. The reality is you're either very disingenuous or incredibly stupid. But after everything you've seen here, if you're an honest person... You will say, well done, Spoon, like the video and hopefully say you enjoyed me thoroughly debunking this dishonest race beta. You're at the very least asking questions. Actually, the main question I'm asking myself is what kind of midwitter plebs would listen to your opinions? It's low-resolution, blue-pilling swill. Why would he bring up conversations about race in films where that isn't the focus? Because Hollywood doesn't ever shut up about diversity, you dingus. Why would he lie and manipulate footage of a film made by a person that he politically disagrees with? I have no evidence for any of this, and your credibility has been burned. No one has any reason to take you seriously after watching this video. Why is he spreading misinformation about a woman and attributing political positions to her? What does any of this have to do with film? This is because he's not a film reviewer. He's a political ideologue that complains almost exclusively about mainstream media to push rhetoric. Yeah, it's not like the mainstream media is a key component in pushing a narrative, and if you don't like it, you would be outspoken against it or anything. Hell, you could be against mainstream media with no political bent at all, up until some idiot on the internet insinuates you have one. Let's be honest here for one, shall we? This man is a walking case of projection. You still haven't said why any of this is objectively bad, other than espousing the most mundane talking points I can get from any space a liberal woman who's drunk before noon. In fact, you'll never see him talking about or promoting anything that's not mainstream unless it's an attempt at a narrative push. So, yeah, he'll talk about Squid Game or Kingdom because they're mainstream, but do any of you believe he cares about Korean media at all? You know, because Korean women are probably some of the most feminist on Earth to the point that it heavily contributes to their birth rate decline and the swath of strong female protagonists that permeate Korean media properties? He has no idea because he can only regurgitate talking points against what's in the mainstream because you can't grift on things people don't know about. Now hold on a second there because you said something curious. You can't grift on things people don't know about. You just said he's pushing a political agenda. Why the hell would he talk about non-mainstream things then? Especially from another country where the narrative wouldn't have any weight. See, this is why the term grifter needs to piss off. It's supposed to be someone who peddles things they don't believe in for money. All you have done in this entire video is accuse him of pushing a political agenda. You haven't even said how other than he happens to align with other people that you deem your political nemesis. 
How is he pushing an agenda yet also grifting? As I said before, if one of his main sources of revenue apparently comes from hitting on Hollywood wank, where is the incentive for him to speak out against anything that also produces his cash cow? Again, none of this makes any sense. This is why his review for season four of The Boys is what it is. He admits he hasn't even watched it, yet claims it has destroyed its audience, his source being the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So it was off to Rotten Tomatoes for me to check out the reviews. Not the critic reviews, of course, because nobody in their right mind gives a shit what those fucking shills have got to say about anything anymore. I'm talking about the audience reviews, which is the only semi-reliable barometer for quality these days, and oh. Oh. And once again, context is needed, because much like the Kong fiasco, he's being dishonest. The video he pulled from is called The Boy Season 4, How Did It Turn Rotten? If you bother to watch Drinker's video, he said, even though he gave it a Drinker Recommender badge earlier on during the first season, the show got stale and lost its hard satirical edge and became more pandering mainstream bollocks, hence why he lost interest. He mentions how Stranger Things had listened to their fans earlier, and so the Off to Rotten Tomatoes comes a bit over a quarter into the video to see if they happen to pull off a Stranger Things-esque kind of comeback. They don't, at which point he proceeds to talk about a recent interview with the showrunner who talks about him shoving in his political perspectives and Drinker feels that that soured the product. Considering he had this feeling before the fourth season, hence why he lost interest to begin with, reading through the comments on Rotten merely confirmed his suspicions. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> What's with the monkey? I'm Robbie Williams. I'm one of the biggest pop stars in the world. But I've always seen myself a little less evolved. You've got to risk it all, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Make sense now? Besides the fact that TV show reviews on Rotten Tomatoes aren't verified, meaning they are subject to review bombs, why doesn't he keep this same energy with, oh, I don't know, The Marvels, Black Widow, or Quantumania, movies that have pretty good audience scores? Because those are movies and not TV series. Duh. Seems like Drinker is the living embodiment of this meme, doesn't it? Oh, for heaven's sake, not only can the left not meme, they can't even apply the context correctly. It wasn't a review, it was why this series went stale and you're trying to apply that formula to film. Again, what dome of the dimwitted do you reside in that convinced you uploading this would be a good idea? Of course he'll never come out and say, I don't want to see black people in lead roles or I'm tired of female protagonists, like the quartering stupidly did. Shout out to Jeremy from the quartering, absolutely based, I thoroughly approve and concur. It's because being that he's selling something, he has something to lose, so he has to communicate in dog whistles to maintain the facade of plausible deniability. What the fuck does that even mean? And Will, I know you're watching, so let me finally address you directly. I know you're watching fucking delusions of grandeur much, Junior? You spend this entire video being so deceitful and dishonest walking into a church might be a lethal endeavor for you, and you have the gall to think your word carries weight? My god, the level of arrogance in this one is surreal. Film reviews are not your personal soapbox to air out your grievances with minority groups and those that advocate for them. Oh god, the cringe. Someone asked Tim Walsh for a tampon. The raging feminine energy from this one must be plugged immediately. It's irresponsible to your, my, and every other audience that consumes film and teaches them nothing about the art form. Neither does shoving in your politics and telling everyone else not to watch if they don't like it. Then again, you live in Los Angeles, and I suspect you would lick a casting couch if it meant you can get off YouTube and stop nagging better creators like the attention-seeking gimp that you are. You create a hostile environment for neutral people that may stumble across your slop, where they may assume that film criticism is full of people like you. Good God, I wish the movie industry was full of more people like Drinker. Or more base, we get better films. 
I think Hollywood would do well to listen to Disparu and Mola. You do a disservice to the craft and give the rest of film YouTube a bad name. No, only you think this because you're a thin-skinned, race-betting bitch. I think I speak on behalf of every reasonable film reviewer out there. You most certainly do not, you arrogant bastard. Go away now. Oh, good God, if only. Make it permanent because that was one of the most embarrassingly piss-poor attempts at denigrating somebody's character I have ever seen. So many lies, mischaracterations, dishonest misrepresentation, and frankly, just plain stupidity. Let me end this video by explaining this whole phenomenon, because it's actually very simple to understand. If you happen to be someone who notices the regime is trying to shove its cringeworthy subpar politics into literally everything, you will find yourself being branded as some kind of political renegade if you simply dislike its current trajectory, give it the middle finger, and tell it to piss off. <sighs> Man, that was an ordeal. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of whiskey to drink. And seeing as I just defended the drinker, cheers for watching. But anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. Before Shopify, were you wondering, where are my sales at? But now you're selling with Shopify. You're easily selling online, in person, and beyond. Discover how millions of entrepreneurs use Shopify to ignite their selling. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash YouTube audio. Ah, he's, no, 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 he's getting I mad at the prospect of losing six grand. This is a bigger punishment than that. I'm, I'm upset about the tattoo I'm upset. he was happy for. He didn't give a fuck. Exactly. Also, don't be confused. That is not the shadow of the microphone on his shirt. That is sweat that's done all of that. Oh, <laughs> it's interesting. You know, um, it, it's like um, if you're a if you're like a ge I, who is like a, a topologist. Is that a profession? Someone who studies the topology a and, you, and you look at like the water. Yeah, a bugologist. Oh, geography, <laughs> bugology. You know, whichever. But you can see the channels that the water takes down as it goes downhill. The paths of least resistance. <laughs> like Most of us, we couldn't do that. We couldn't do that. Mine would just go. It's, well, I'm a dog, so it just, it would. You know, it you could actually name it. Like, there's like there's the river in the middle, and then there's like tributaries going off the side. What's you could it name called? Yeah. Individual one. What, what am I thinking of? I know what you're talking about, right? so a relief map. A diluvian plain or something. Oh, I, well, I, I guess you can see, map. right, because the sweat is pulling where like the folds, the folds are, right? Because it's under the folds of fat, like, if that's, if I'm yeah, seeing it Yeah, it trails right, underneath yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think it trails <laughs> underneath it, right? It probably I think it does. It... It's a whole other oh, reach. and then it yeah, creeps up the shirt. Yeah, yeah you're right. I was, does, assuming, right? Like, if you've got, I, I was like, assuming the neck. Folds, I imagine it sweats underneath the folds, and then it leaks out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love the Why must we talk about such things? It is necessary. <laughs> what does the shirt say, right. guys? Like, does, it, does the shirt say Wakanda? What does it say? Oh, it says. Is that is that the logo we for the uh, the militia Blair, 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 Blair Witch Zoo? Project? That looks like is the. It? You remember the. Unfortunately, a nigga got to go to the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and in this one um then either we'll come back tomorrow with the birdman's reply or like thereof and what we'll come back tonight i don't know but i just don't want to guarantee anything because i don't know for sure nigga might fall asleep i've eaten a lot today and ain't moving as much sitting in front of this fucking laptop all right in case i don't see you Stay free, stay safe, stay on. Hope you and your people never harmed. We up out of this bitch. It's cloud nine, nigga. Hope you and your people never harmed. If I didn't say that part, fuck it. Don't care.